Hello. Hola. ¿Qué pasa? ¿Qué pasa? What's poppin', girl? ¿Qué pasa contigo? All of that, no need all of that. <laughs> Know, ¿qué pasa? <laughs> As usual, you have to come with the, you have to come with, come the with something of... extra, right? I gotta come with something extra. You know uh, it. Always, What's always that? gotta be extra. I know, I know. Welcome to the Let's Connect show, people. You are two yes. to Miss Reese and Miss Carol Tanya. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. So, what's going on, girl? Ah. Uh, What's going on? So much. Uh, it, it, it's more like what's not going on, right? <laughs> I'm telling you, every day is something new. Oh, my goodness. I just feel like what is happening these days? Something is always happening. I know. The, the, it's busy. The world is busy. The world? Yeah, you hit the nose on the head. Busy, busy, busy like a bee. Are you hitting on the nose? Whatever the saying goes. Yes, ah. man. I'm yeah, it's like the world is busy these days. Something is happening everywhere and every day. Let's not even talk about the news. It's like, I don't even want to watch the news anymore. I don't want to turn on my television. It's like, it's oh all my goodness, disgusting. seriously? Yeah. People are losing it. They're losing their minds. Mm -hmm. You know? I it's like so much going on with everybody. This pandemic has just been driving everybody crazy and crazier than, you know, into doing a lot into more state of anxiety, depression, just, just so many concerns. But, you know, I don't even hear about, pan, uh, about the COVID anymore. You know, this is phasing out. That's what we think. But you don't hear people, you remember one time it was- People may not be talking about it, but it's not phasing out. It's not going anywhere. They're just not talking about it because people are just sick and tired of being sick and tired. And people are just sick and tired of being home and, and being stuck indoors. So nobody wants to talk about it because nobody wants to get stuck anymore. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like that that type of thing. But in certain regions of the world, namely right now, even like China, they're back in lockdown. Really? I yes, in Shenzhen, China. There's there's a province there, Shenzhen, China, with I think how many people? Like nine million people. Yes. Okay. They're in lockdown and only one member from each family is allowed to leave the house every two days to get groceries or essentials or something like that. They're back in lockdown because their numbers, their COVID numbers are spiking again. Wow. I can, I, oh. I can, I forget that you, you Asian, you love the, the, to, to. I love everything. I love everybody. <laughs> so you should know. <laughs> Yes. So I'm always looking and reading and learning, you know, and this is just one of those things. They're back in lockdown and it's very, very serious there. Here in the States, you know, people are just so tired. They say that our numbers have gone down. Mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping that that is truly the case. But um, and like maybe 80% of folks here or 81% or something like that have at least one COVID shot. Mm. So they feel like that's helping, but you know, I, I don't know. I just think we don't want to take it for granted. Like COVID is gone. Let's go back out. Let's party. Yeah. Long to go in the world world. Like seriously, I'm, I'm longing for that interaction i mean i think we all are if i'm really being honest you know we all are we're all longing to go back out into the world and to do what we do girl yes. you know we we hate being stuck indoors and and like i said as humans you know we don't want to be we don't want to be stuck inside we don't want to be separate and apart from each other and we need each other more than we'd like to admit right you know, as human beings, but we don't want to admit it. But COVID kind of forced us to do that, believe it or not. Yep, I'm telling you, I'm I'm just waiting for the day that I can go cruise. And, on a cruise? Yes. Um, um, 
actually had yeah. someone that just came off of a cruise and he was telling me that the he went on Holland America and you have to get tested 24 hours before. Then you go on onto the, the ship. They test you again. Okay. So definitely everybody there is negative. Mm-hmm. Supposed to be negative. Mm-hmm. I didn't was good he had a good time no problem i guess because they were at ease knowing that anybody that they let on the ship mm-hmm. had, um negative word okay so mm. i'm waiting for that that's my thing at least to go to the bahamas just a weekend cruise i need to like you know what i'm saying i hear you need that i hear you no cruises for me <laughs> I get motion sickness. Oh, you do? Because yeah. Yeah. Not because I don't like cruises or anything like that. It's not like I'm making fun of it, but I get like terrible motion sickness. I take the Dramamine. I take, you know, the patch behind the ears. I do all of that stuff and nothing works for me. <laughs> you know, my favorite part of the being on a cruise? What? Drink and you don't have to drive. Yes, that's true. It's just so relaxing. You can sleep. But the same thing is if you go to like, I don't know, an all-inclusive hotel somewhere, you don't have to drive. That's true. And everything is right there. When I went to Mexico with that, you know, you have the all-inclusive. We were at the hotel. Was, we had the pool. We had the beach. We had the restaurants. We had everything there. You don't have to drive anywhere. And if you want to go somewhere, then, you know, you pay for one of those where you take the bus. We took it to Chichen Itza and all that stuff. So you don't have to drive. When I went to Mexico, it didn't sound like good like that. Where you went? <laughs> Girl, you're going on the wrong stuff, man. On a cruise, and then <laughs> on the Mexico, I don't know what that was, but I didn't like that part. Oh, Cabos or one of those fancy places, I guess. One of these. Well, it all depends on on where you want to go, or you know what your interests are. But I I had a great time when I went, and it's not always the best to go to. So I'm going to say this very carefully. It's not always the best to go to the, the, the places where everybody goes, you know, like the most popular places. Where did you go again? Where's the place you went? Um, it surely was a Cancun. Where the one yeah, that you, you have, um, oh that, Lord. I, I don't, it was a Cancun and it wasn't Las Cabos. Yeah, you know, those are some of the, popular areas and whatnot but you don't always have to go there at the same time i'm not saying go somewhere isolated because we all know what could happen in those instances you know but check out some of the other more safer nicer areas you know we had a great time i had a great time there but um so back to the new did we even say who we are we just started chatting we always that go ahead Sorry, people. You know, so we are so sorry, everybody. We get so excited. We get on here. We forget ourselves and just hop into this conversation. But let's step back a minute and introduce ourselves. My name is Carol and... My name is Reese. Reese. And we make up this amazing show called Let's Connect, yeah. right? That's what we do. Let's connect. And we connect on this show and we talk about everything amazing, everything that are affecting us in the world today. And we just try to bring you some positive lights. We try to bring you gems every week. And we talk about various different topics, mental health, mental health awareness. We talk about um, eating properly. We talk about health and wellness. We talk about... um, wealth management we talk about your credit we talk about autism we talk about grief we talk about everything on this show hey, we talk about other stuff too like relations and relationships blended families and getting your groove on and all that good stuff and today's topic i am so excited about today's topic is about body dysphoria so, um, let me help you out girl it's body dysmorphia 
by the end of the show, I'll be able to spell it and pronounce it. Oh, don't get me started with that one. <laughs> And I got to good school, you know. I went to a good school, people. I know because we went to the same school. Hello. Isn't that word? <laughs> so y'all can't stop laughing. I will get it by the end of the night. Oh, Reese, no, you're I, a trip. No, body dysmorphia, people, and it's body dysmorphia disorder, otherwise known as BDD. So just body dysmorphia. I'm sticking. Sure. With, I stick with BDD. But that, <laughs> of course, you would. Very, very, I'm looking forward to that discussion. Yes. So before we jump into that, why don't you play our intro for the people so they can hear us mean? and know who we are and know that we are rocking with them every Monday evening on MyTurnRadio.com. So if you're not sure where to check us out every Monday evening from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, come on, join us. Or you can hop on our Let's Connect page on our Facebook Live. So if you want to see us, Check us out live right now on our Facebook Live on Let's Connect, all right? Or if you're not able to watch us and comment with us, just listen to us. It's okay. We're on the radio, myturnradio.com. We are an all-female DJ radio station, all females here. We support each other, and we are doing it big, everybody. So just come back and be with us every Monday evening. We are here tonight. Come chat with us later on. We're talking about body dysmorphia. But right now, Miss Reese is setting us up. Good. Yeah. You're listening to the Let's Connect show with Carolyn Reese right here on My Turn Radio. And That's right. You heard? heard I was. Had you not heard? You just it's time heard. for all. What's affecting us? Okay. I can tell you what's affecting me. But first, I want to big up to Shells Sparkle. She's watching. Hey girl. Hello. Shell Sparkle. What's up? Yes. Thank you guys for being with us. You know, it's so funny. I love when we get the amazing comments from our friends and they let us know that they're watching. They comment, they ask questions, they ask questions of our guests that we bring on the show so that we're not the only ones talking all the time. They are talking too and participating with us. That's an amazing feeling, guys. So we love it. And we love that you come back and spend your precious time with us because you know what? You all could be doing any number of things, but you choose to be here with us. We appreciate it. Yes. Appreciate that. And this is our Shelly Sparkles is our upcoming star. Our upcoming star. No. So listen. Oh, that's right. That's right. She changed her name. See, when you keep, I keep up with her. No, no, no. I do too. Because I saw that and I was like, at first when I saw the name change, I was like, who's that? You see, who is for you though? You see, who follow you, (laughs) Shelly? Well, she knows that I'm always checking her out and shouting her out. But for everybody else who don't know, then tell them who we're talking about, Reese. Talking about our upcoming star that's um she has numerous um roles she was she just finished doing the shy right she just started done filming the shy and now she's doing a tyler perry i don't know the name or anything but everybody doesn't know it's tyler perry and just so you know we interviewed her before she became a big star so i know when miss shelly is doing big things she's that's like, right let's connect and share that with our listeners we love you, Shelly. I'm always following her to see what she's doing. She cracked me up. But That's I- right. She does. And I love watching her posts as well because she is amazing and she's very positive. Yes. I like the fact that, you know, she, what she's doing and she's positive and she uses a lot of her posts also to encourage other people and to let people know that, listen, if you're out there doing your thing, keep doing it yep. and don't let anybody stop you. So you go, girl. Go oh, girl. And also we want to big up to Carlene Froling. I don't know if I pronounced it right, but welcome to Let's Connect. You're in for a ride tonight. Cause you know, we don't, well, let me warn, let me put a disclaimer out there. I am not crazy. 
and I'm not drunk. <laughs> no, but the fact that you had to put that disclaimer out there, that says a lot. That's a lot, right? <laughs> The fact that you had to put that out there, that says a lot. Oh my goodness, that's hilarious, Reezy. I got to warn the people, right? You, yeah. <laughs> you got to warn the people. Warn the people. That's hilarious. Welcome, welcome to our show. Welcome. And um, she's she's from Florida. So what's on? What's affected us today? First and foremost, I was shocked, shocked, shocked when I saw the news about Tracy Braxton. Yes. Passing away. Rest in peace. Let me tell you, I love the Braxton. You know, I'm a reality show junkie. And I just love them. I love the sisterhood that they have. They fuss and fight. But at the end of the day, they always come together as one. And that was like, I think that shocked everybody because they didn't, eat, we didn't even knew she was sick. Which she has every right. They don't have to tell us everything. But we're so yep. We're so used to being in people's business like me. I love that tea. Tea. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a shock, but she had um cancer for a year. Yes. She had cancer. And um rest in I know I can just I can't imagine what they're going through now, especially her parents, you know? Yeah. The whole family, because, you know, if you watch the Braxton's, you know, on WeTV, you'll know that they were a very close knit yes. family, very tight, you know, and even even if they are arguing or they're disagreeing, they have their big knock down, draw now disagreements and whatnot. At the end of the day, they were still very, very close and they shared a lot. They shared everything together, which is something that I appreciate and I admired about them. And um, so it's a tough time for them right now. I mean, they weren't shocked. We're shocked because we didn't know about it, but apparently they, they've known this all along and she was sick for at least a year. So they knew this was coming and they were all together. They were with her when she passed away. So they knew. I, you hope, know. I hope that this, because all the other practices, as I said, I watched it from season one too, but the one sister that kind of irritated me and I hope that this will kind of calm her behind down is Tamar, the, 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 the baby. Like, you know, she kind of irked me with her behavior and everything. But, and I'm just hoping that her sister passing will kind of let her chill out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I, I, I haven't heard any, I haven't really kept up. I know you love the tea. So girl, you probably are much closer to what's happening than I am. <laughs> you love to spill the tea, girl. So you're watching everything. I haven't recently been watching as closely as I used to. So, but. I haven't really been keeping up with her. I don't know. I think she had some difficulties of her own and she had kind of pulled back a little bit because I know she went through some stuff. So, a lot. so my impression of her is that she had definitely pulled back a bit. So I don't know what where she stands today because she had some, some difficulties she as made, well. She made me want to reach through that TV and just strangle her with her behavior sometimes. But you know, yeah, but didn't she recently go through a trauma as well? I'm saying you never know what a person is going Why, through. you know, people, that's why we can't judge, you know, which is why our motto is. But you judge me all the time. Of course I judge you. That's right. But we, I'm not going to judge anybody else. I'm judging you. I save it all for you because I can't do it with anybody else, you know? That is why we're not supposed <laughs> to, because you don't know what a person is going through. Yeah. And you judging that person, you may say that wrong thing that just pushed them over the edge. Yeah. Never- yeah. Because everybody was shocked, you know, when she ended up in the hospital with her tragedy, it's like, oh my goodness, really? Wow. Because everyone thought she was this very tough, yes. you know, woman and, you know, always aggressive and forward and, and see, we all have our battles that we're fighting, all of us. But another thing I want to ask you right now, Miss Reese, and for me, it's like the elephant in the room. 
why do you have on pink headphones? <laughs> what are the, what is that about? You look like you stole your grandbaby's headphones. Really like, let's talk about this, right? Let's not look, let's connect issued headphones. <laughs> You see what you did? Can you hear me? I hear you now, nice and loud. Which I'm you see what you did? About. Can you hear me? I hear you nice and loud right now. Hello? Apparently, you can't hear me. Wait, <laughs> 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 so strange. Hold Why on. Why do you have those on? Those look like your grandbabies. Hold on. Those that you done stole out of her little backpack that she takes the kindergarten with her and you got them on your head trying to pass them off like official radio issued you on, I don't, <laughs> something set out of this thing here and oh my goodness i don't know if folks are still and you're hearing me, people i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna keep talking for those folks who might still be able to hear me because you over there fooling around with hot pink headphones, hot pink little girl headphones. What is this about? I simply don't understand it. And I cannot fathom what those headphones are all about. It's like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> this girl. Oh. Are you hearing me with those pink headphones, Reese? I can't hear you anymore, so. Can you hear me now? I hear you now. Turn it up some more. Listen, when you, when you mess with people, you know. Turn it up some more or cl close up to your microphone. Is your microphone hot pink too? <laughs> Wait a minute. Listen, when you mess with people, you know, because <laughs> the earphones did. My earphones had nothing to do with you, and we were doing my show fine, and you got messing my pink headphones, and you see what happened? Did I throw you off your game? Listen, <laughs> when, when you said that, the whole mix of things <laughs> fell off and unplugged because you were judging me and my pink headphones. <laughs> You understand? I said, I said, what is up with the big headphones? All of a sudden, the mic dropped the headphones. <laughs> dropped. The monitor plugged out. <laughs> I felt like being a girly girl today, okay? This was the only headphones I could I'm find. Right now. Listen, oh listen, that was funny. Please I'm see. messing with my, my pink headphones. Is it like what? People, what's wrong with my pink headphones? I'm you crazy. look like, like I said, you look like you stole your little grandbaby's headphones from her kindergarten oh. backpack. Those are not radio issued, let's connect issued <laughs> headphones. Thank you very much. I said, I'm styling and profiling, okay? Okay. Don't no, me. no, no. Your hey. baby granddaughter would be styling and profiling walking into kindergarten with those. Oh my God. You oh my not God. styling on the radio no, right now no with them hot pink. <laughs> Listen, you know. Looking like, looking like Fisher Price headphones. <laughs> Wait a minute. Looking like Fisher Price headphones. Seriously? Listen, it's, listen, it's not about the headphones. It's not about the headphones. Okay. Oh my goodness gracious. I don't Girl. Know. True, leave me on my head. Coming on the radio, embarrassing me up here. People, see, this is what I have to deal with, okay? Ooh. This is why I judge her. I, I, I'm dealing with the Fisher Price headphones. I for no She's trying to do an official radio program in Fisher Price headphones. Really? So, how about you send me some? radio headphones then miss yes girl we're gonna have to do that let's yes. let's get that done oh my god <laughs> lord if you're not too busy please please oh, oh you know god. what before we even go further i wanted to say something else because today we can't ignore this everybody if you are listening right um today is national nap day what? National Nap Day, Napping Day today. It is the National Nap Day. And I'm on the show. I should be napping right now. You who sleep more than anybody I know in my life. You did not know this, huh? No, not at Girl. all. 
I don't know, but I didn't fall asleep. Well, you don't need to anyway, because you sleep. Oh my goodness. I didn't fall asleep on anybody today while I was on the phone with them. I'm surprised you didn't fall asleep. Let me tell you, folks, if you all don't know, this girl sends me pictures of herself sleeping on the job every day. She, her computer has nothing but Z's. Like she's typing a document and it has, the paper has Z from the beginning to end. <laughs> Z, just a whole page of nothing but Z. Oh, listen, listen. The letter Z. Oh my goodness. And that's great because that represents your mood. You are taking oh, Z's. I'll be on the phone and be falling asleep and they're like, hello, hello. I'm serious. This is, it's not. That's bad. I Take mean, you do it to me, but you're doing it while you're working, girl. It's not. It's you do not. it to me, so I'm used to it. But while you work, you're about to get fired. It's because <laughs> of my condition, people. I have a condition. Okay. And thank yeah. you, Carlene. Carlene says she's loving the Fisher Price headphones. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, Carlene is going to say that. She's trying to make you feel good in your Fisher Price headphones. No hate, no hate, no hate. <laughs> oh my God. But at least she can hear you in your Fisher Price headphones. Thank though. you very so, much. Okay, I am you. always going to be me. It's <laughs> Fisher Price today. Okay. In your kindergarten Fisher Price I'm headphones. Like a, like a kid. Sometimes I feel like a nut. Sometimes I don't. And that's what I'm feeling right now. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> yes. So Reese. Yes. National nap day. I know this is for everybody in the world except for you because you you take a nap all day, yes, every all day, day anyway. Every day. You be napping on everybody while they're talking to you. You fell asleep almost on this show before. And you I had to remember? snap you out of it like, what are you doing? Sleeping on the show. <laughs> like oh no oh no she's going oh, she's going my, she's going oh my i gotta catch God. her before she goes i'm like Reese, wake up <laughs> oh my You're God. A mess oh my god it will oh. be it will be rectified soon trust me oh my goodness but today for everybody else except Reese. yes it's national nap day so uh basically that was developed because you know yesterday daylight savings time kicked in Right. You know that, right? You know that, right? Yes, I do know that. Yes. You you know that, right? Okay. One o'clock, I realized it was changing. Yeah. Yeah. Daylight savings time kicked in, meaning that yesterday, everybody, if you don't know, um, that means y'all were late today for everything because the clock went forward one hour. So we are now an hour ahead. So basically yesterday when it happened, we all lost a lot of sleep, right? So in case you're tired and because we're all so tired, this was developed um, by, it was invented by a man named William Anthony. He's a psychologist from Boston University in 1999. And he figured it would be a good day to celebrate the importance of napping because we all lost an hour of sleep yesterday, as well as we're more sleep deprived these days more than usual. So it's an unofficial holiday, but it's observed the Monday after daylight saving time begins. Yeah. And it allows us to adjust our new, adjust to our new sleep schedule. Yes. yes. You know, because a lot of people are very sensitive to that. Their bodies are, that you know, is. one hour of change. It throws us off. People who work overnight, yes. you know, and stuff like that. It, oh, they feel it because for years they're used to doing a certain thing. Their body is now accustomed to that. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, Definitely. Another thing that I have to mention, because y'all know I love my Nick Cannon. They canceled his show. No, 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 no. What? Yes, they canceled my Nick's show. They canceled his show. I was watching it today yeah. and I was just thinking, I was like, you know what? Everything he touches turned to gold because he has this great yeah. personality. But they I didn't said, know it was canceled. Yeah, it's canceled. We have, they have enough, um, um content for me up until may but that's it they canceled it and he, so he was like it was for business reasons because you know he's a businessman but yeah I think he's coming out somewhere else i think they're you gonna know, he, he's always doing he's, uh, yeah he's me, like a, he's like a cat he lands on his feet yeah. all the time but he's so good at it yes yes i love wilding out i love you ever watch that show with wilding out with him i used to it's it, you know it's back 
is back. I, I didn't know. Yeah, I used to back. watch it. But what I like about him is his personality. And it's funny because while I was watching him today, he had a show on um, a panel with all men. Yes, yes. And they were talking about stuff today. And I was like, you know what? This guy is such a gem because he fits in with anybody. Anybody. He can have a conversation with the queen if he wanted to. And then he can have a conversation with a farmer. And it's just his personality just works with any situation and I love I, I that love, about him. You know what I love about it? He is transparent. He is honest. Yes. He like, he tells it as it is. Yeah. He tackled him about them eight babies and he talked, and he said he was really honest about it. He He's was honest and about- upfront in his conversations yeah. and he does not come off offensive not at all you know he's not like he can say something and it doesn't sound offensive to someone else and you know it's like i said it's the type of personality he has and honestly this kind of stuff you're either born with it or you're not you can't but, develop it but his show was like a breath of fresh air like i liked him i liked his show yeah but well hey, you know but it's a business and said, they look I at think- the numbers Exactly. I think um, what's going to happen is um, he's going to go somewhere else. He's going to land somewhere else. Quite possibly. I'm sure he will, but I wish him all the best then. Oh, man, I really liked him and liked his show. He was my, he, I was going to be his baby mama. I was going to have number nine. What, no, number nine baby mama? Yeah, number, oh, he had nine baby mama, but he had nine kids. And nine I was, kids. His, you know, give him his baby, baby, baby number nines made baby, baby mama. mama. Oh, Lord, girl, get in line. <laughs> get in line. Yeah, he just look at me and I get pregnant. He don't have to <laughs> just, look at, just look at me and I get pregnant. That's because obviously he's very fertile. Very, I'm Clearly. Fertile. We're two fertile myrtles, okay? Clearly the man is extremely fertile. So all he has to do is look at somebody and it's like, okay, you're next. Yep. He doesn't even have to get close to you. He just look at you and go, you're next. And you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> baby oh, popping out baby popping out mm-hmm. <laughs> welcome dara i hope i pronounced her name correctly dara celestine has joined us on facebook live welcome to let's connect all righty hey, dara so glad you're with us oh yeah and carlene says she agrees nick is well-rounded on and authentic yeah yep so yes. true he is very authentic. That's the word. I like that word that she uses. He comes off because, you know, we, we never know people real true selves, but he appears very authentic to me. That's how he comes off. And whatever situations you put him in, trust he me, just, they put him in. They asked him about Mariah. You know, he did a song for Mariah saying that he she's the one that he lost. He didn't um, talk her alone and wish he could have her back and all that. Um, I didn't ask really, I didn't even know that. You know, I'm all up in people's business. Girl, I'm yes, you're all up in everybody's business. I no life, so I got to be I see you coming. I'm going to close my door. I'm locking you out. <laughs> I'm not letting you in. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. But, um, yeah. Oh, man. Well, um. I'm I'm really sorry about that. Really, really sorry about that. I was hoping but I catch that he would morning. be on a little bit more, but he'll be fine. He'll come back with something and he'll I used to watch him in the mornings before I go to work. Yeah. You now I, I and I'm and I'm up with him with Wild and Out. So hey. I, but I don't watch and he's on the mask singer too. But I Yeah, I know. Him. And I he's very him. good. He's yeah. very good on the mask. He's good in everything he does, honestly. Like I said, he comes off very authentic. He's like easy to be around, you know. Yes. I don't know. From what he appears. So I don't know. He'll he'll be back. I hope he'll be back with, with other things. He will. I really like that show he had. I thought it was fun. Oh, uh, one lady says one lady <laughs> wrote on the Facebook page, um, uh, because you know I'm on that page was like Nick had all the cougars out watching his show. I was like <laughs> <laughs> Go One ahead. day he had this lady on. She's a truck driver because you know he he has this segment that he likes to do to say you know who's how they're dressed and whatnot. Uh, yes, I forget, yes. the, I forget yes. the name of the segment, 
but <clears throat> he'll go with the camera around has the camera pan around and find whoever is best dressed and he had this lady she's a truck driver and she looked good he was like you look good I girl I so him. it doesn't matter what all the different age ranges he you know he are, call, are showing up for him he don't say cougars he called them seasoned women i love it seasoned oh yes uh-huh so you should change your name from certified cougar to certified season. I'll be certified Woman. all day, every day. I don't want to be no yes, season. certified, certifiably seasoned. No, uh, 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 uh. That don't <laughs> certified cougar is good enough for me. I've been, trust me, you know, people, you're not a cougar. You're a seasoned, you know, cougar, a seasoned you know, cougar. Okay. So that's what you, what you should say. I'm not a seasoned, seasoned cougar. <laughs> You know, people don't call me by my name. They be calling me Cougar like, yo, I do have a name, you know. Jesse. Oh, your Jessie, name is Cougar. Yeah, when Jesse calls me, she was like, what's up, Cougar? Like, What's up, Cougar? What's up, Cougar? So, Damn, because that's your name. Yep. Cougar. cougar. <laughs> Season Cougar. That, that should be your new moniker. Representing for all the ladies out there, for the Cougars out there. Yep, Season Cougar, girl. I need Jesus and two therapists. <laughs> So I'm standing for the people. I need them must be saying this lady is crazy. For those who are joining us for the first time, I swear to you, I'm not drinking and I'm not crazy. I don't know what is in that cup that you're drinking, girl. I don't know. I feel like something's in it. You never know what's up in there. I feel know. like something is in that cup. You're just not telling us. But guess what? If anything is in a cup and I need help, we got a therapist on site right now. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, I come prepared. Yes. <laughs> you scare me sometimes, you know? You scare me sometimes, girl. I scare myself. Oh, my goodness. I, I thought I knew everything about you. I thought I, you know, I was prepared for you. Uh, Every day is something else. I'm never ready. Never ready for Reese. Never mm -mm. ready. Never ready. I am never ready, girl. You're a nut job. But that's all right. We love you for it. Thank you. <laughs> and with that being said yes oh i wanted to remind everybody so take your naps catch up on your nap today it's national napping day it's good to take a nap but you might have missed your window because apparently it's best to do it between like 2 and 3 p.m or earlier in the day you know but before two or three you know maybe like one o'clock or something it's best to do it is siesta because that's the, the the that's what they call it there's some country i need to live there because they say every day you have that siesta is between one and two so you gotta no you don't need to be in that country you'd end up sleeping all day they could not wake you up mm -hmm. as hard as you sleep as much as you sleep girl i don't know I don't know. But for everybody else, for regular folks, you know, when we say nap, we're talking about maybe like a 20 minute nap. It shouldn't really be more than like 30 minutes. The power so nap. it's not a sleep. Okay. So if you sleep, if you're sleeping for like an hour, you know, if you fall asleep for like an hour or two hours, when you wake up, you're like all real groggy. And it, then it's nap. like, you might as well just sleep for the entire night. Yes. So that doesn't really help. You need like that, that boost kind of like, you know, when, when you drink caffeine or something and it gives you that energy boost, that's what that nap does for you. And it's good for, for kids and for adults, everybody. So take your nap, everybody rejuvenate your brain. It'll do your body good. You hear that? And you hear that Reese? rejuvenate your brain. Reese, I don't know if this works for you, girl, mm -mm. not you. Yeah. And with that being said, let us go here. <laughs> it's now time for our topic of the day. Woohoo! Oh yeah! Uh, uh, bring uh, it in! Bring it in! Bring uh, it in! Uh, uh, okay, let's not scare our guests. Sorry. Hmm. Yes. Our guest, because we want her to come back. So the topic of today is what? Because you know I can't pronounce it. For those <laughs> who are just coming on to our show, the topic for the day is. The topic today we're talking about everybody is body dysmorphia or body dysmorphic disorder. So for, for you, Reese, it's BDD. BDD, because I cannot pronounce it and I don't want people to think that I can't read or write because I <laughs> that word is just messing with me all day. 
Aspect. body dysmorphic disorder. Yes. Okay. That's what we're talking about, people. We're going to chat today about BDD, body dysmorphia. And I'm giving you all a little bit of time to run. Like, you know, every week I usually say this, everybody. You guys know us very well. Run and grab your notebook, grab a pen, because this is something that you want to take some notes because we always love, you know how much we love to give you little gems on this show. So go get your notebook right now. I see you running. I see y'all running. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Go, go ahead, do that. Get your notebook. Y'all going to learn something today. Yes. Get your notebook. <laughs> oh, Dara said she was jamming. All right, girl. <laughs> So grab your notebook and grab your pen. We'll get back to jamming later. And right now we're going to talk about body dysmorphia. But before we do, we have to welcome a special person. You guys know how much we love to bring the experts onto the show who knows what they're talking about. Not Reese, who's sleeping through the whole thing. I Google. But... <laughs> I will Google in a minute. This, this is how we go, but we don't do that on here. <laughs> But well, we love to bring in the experts who can talk to you guys and let you know from their expertise and their knowledge that they have studied this stuff and you know that it's authentic. All right. So Thank I hope you guys are ready. We are going to introduce Soraya. I hope I said that right. Did I get that right? The mute. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You did. <laughs> yes. Soraya, very pretty name. Soraya, I'm not even going to try to pronounce your last name. I'm going to allow you to talk about that and pronounce it so I don't butcher your name because that's one thing I'm very sensitive about, always making sure that I pronounce our friends' names properly. So yeah. what I want to tell you, everybody, is Soraya, I want to introduce her a little bit. Soraya is the founder and CEO of Healing Wounds Coaching and Consulting Company, all right? And um, she, actually, Soraya, you're from a Haitian-American background, right? But you're yeah, from the... That's, is that what you said? <laughs> Listen, yeah. I learned that in the club, okay? <laughs> That's, yeah, you, they say you can't learn stuff in the club. <laughs> you learned that in the club, Reese. <laughs> Embarrassing. Shame. <laughs> but you know, that's good. You learned something. All right. Something. Nabule. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So Soraya, um, as the CEO of the Healing Wounds Coaching and Consulting, your main focus really is on mental health and um, folks who are battling um, anxiety and those types of issues. Uh, so welcome, Soraya. I'm Thank going you. to ask you to tell us a little bit more about yourself so people understand about your background. And so people understand who you are and why you chose this path that you're on. Sure. You yeah. Um, so, yes, my name is Soraya Papayuk. I am the founder and CEO of Healing Wounds Coaching and Consulting. Um, I am also a trauma mental health therapist and a wellness coach for women of color. Um, I right. I actually, um, my, my specialization is in trauma and it, this, this topic is very important in the black community because um, it's definitely correlated and related to um, trauma. Um, we, I mean, um, this is just, just a topic that I know that we definitely need to talk about. Um, so yeah, I'm just happy to be here. Well, absolutely welcome i'm so glad that you're here because let me tell you something this topic reese and i were talking about this before also this topic is a big and prevalent topic and the whole when i say the topic not just body dysmorphia but the whole issue of mental health yeah you know absolutely. it's 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 a big issue and we're all going through it including myself and reese every day and we work so hard, including everybody else who, who are listening to us right now, her friends who are checking us out. We talk about this on the show all the time, mental health. And it's just taking a really big hit, mm -hmm. you know, in the last couple of years with the COVID and being in the pandemic and having to be, how would you say, live via Zoom. 
it's been tough. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I worked with, with a lot of people. And to be honest, even with what's going on right now in the world, we are definitely in survival mode. And you put us in survival mode, that is a high increase of stress. And when there's a high increase of stress, um, there's more likely a chance for anxiety and depression and, and other um, unhealthy habits come along with that as well. Yeah, I'm so glad that you said that because, you know, and I just want to point out even before we get into that topic too, it's okay, everybody, if you're feeling something, it's, it's, we're all feeling something. So it doesn't mean that you're worse off or you're less than, you know, maybe just accept it, find someone to talk to someone like Soraya, you know, that's one of the reasons that she's here today. I want you all to know about her and reach out to her if you have help. And as usual, at the end of the show, you know, we'll let you know how you can reach her um, if you need help. You know, it's, it's not, um, how would you say, it's not a shame, mm -hmm. really, if you need help to reach out when you do, okay? So we're gonna jump into this today. I wanted to mention too, I saw from your information that you are, and the reason I'm saying this is because our wonderful friends who are checking us out, and listening to us, um, I want you all to know a little bit about her background as well. So Soraya, you're a surviving cancer, uh, you're a, sur a cancer survivor, right? Mm -hmm. you're, you were, I don't know if you still are, but battled anxiety and depression mm -hmm. yourself and recovered from multiple suicide attempts. Wow. That's a big deal. And a domestic violence relationship as well which is only a part of your story. Um, but I brought that out because we cover those topics a lot, even on the show. So we have a lot of folks who are listening and I want you guys to know, listen, these are big issues. Soraya battled them, perhaps currently still battling. I'll let you talk about that, Soraya. But I mentioned that because I want people to understand that if they're going through this, you know what they're dealing with. Absolutely. Um, this, uh, I don't, I'm not too sure why this topic is so taboo even in 2022 i mean we just came we're still in and coming out of a pandemic and mental health is still something that people don't want to talk about um mental health uh, I'm, I'm not too sure well i believe that people are, are not educated on what it means it's just as uh important as your physical health so if we get hurt we go to the doctor and we get a diagnosis of what is going on and they give us treatment and uh whether it's medication or some steps to get back to health that is the same thing with our mental health you know sometimes we have stress it's overwhelming. It's very hard to, to manage. So we may need someone to help us kind of organize our thoughts. Um, sometimes we may have uh, depression because there's so many things that can happen. Uh, we, as I said, we're in uh, the pandemic. And so uh, there's a lot of people. We've lost a lot of people during this time. There's a lot of grieving going on. You understand? So that's the, that, that, that causes for a depression um, that can happen. These, these are things that can happen um, to anyone, everyone. Um, and so being able to talk to someone about it when it's necessary to get the steps to get back to health is very important. Um, so yes, I, I have had, what, as a child, um, you know, I struggled with some anxiety and depression. My parents were immigrants. Um, coming into this country and having to survive and figure things out that took a toll on my family's life. And being a young person, it did. It caused some, some, some difficulties mentally. Um, I, obviously, I'm able to recover from those things and I do things daily to make sure that I'm on that path, especially because I help other people on, that, on their journey. Um, but making sure we do what we need to every day to take care of ourselves is, is what's important, even our mental health. Yes, absolutely. And I imagine that, of course, that's where that background catapulted you into what you decided to study because you're certified in yeah. this field to handle this type of mental health counseling and trauma counseling, etc. So it's not like you decided to wake up one day and do this. You are certified. Oh, no. no, yeah, in this I have. Arena. Yes, I have my master's in social work. Um, and yes, I'm a, I'm a trained trauma therapist. There you go, people. Okay, <laughs> I wanted her to say that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because I wanted you to hear it from her. 
um, that she is certified in this field. She is trained. She has her master's degree in this. So when you talk to her and I like when I talk to therapists or wherever I go, people like to know that you understand what they're saying. You're not just nodding your head. You yeah. know, you've been there, done that. You have gone through it as well. So you do have more than empathy for what they're going through. You actually have firsthand Lived knowledge. It. Yeah. So with that, everybody, I want you to jump into, let's chat about what body dysmorphic disorder is. Can you tell folks like in, in simple terms, what that is? Um, so it's really a, it's a disorder for like, the best way to explain is obsessing over your image, your body image. Um, so that, that can look like they're being very anxious about um, something that is really minuscule, um, really small, um, and obsessing over that, that issue. Um, right now, <laughs> we are living in a culture um, for like our accepting our bodies in the way they are, you know, we're going under the knife and, you know, doing things that to make sure that we look a certain way for societal, like um, for societal reasons, for, you know, social media, whatever that looks like. Um, and that can cause an issue, not being able to accept ourselves. That's really right. what it is. Yes, um, decided to put a lot of pressure on us, especially us full figured woman. You notice that's a full figured, you know, it's true. Like full figured woman, um, they let us feel like we let we are less than, right? You can't you can't get a role in a TV show if you're a size 14, because they consider a size 14 um big you know what i'm saying so i can understand you know where if you have that disorder you know where it's coming from yeah the um actually you know america well i want to say our our society's view on what beauty looks like is definitely affecting us and i think it starts at a very very young age yep. of what the expectations are i'm gonna and i want to talk about like for women you know that's a big deal this it's also for men um, and believe it or not, there are people who are like bodybuilders who go and get treatment for these things, mm. who have body dysmorphia because they're obsessive over their body. And um, this can also cause uh, eating disorders. This can cause issues with eating, yes. um, just being obsessive with our bodies, whether it's um, uh, binging, meaning eating too much and purging, not eating enough, or, you know, like... Um, eating and then, you know, going to work out excessively, taking laxatives, do, doing things like that. These are the extreme cases, but it's real. It sure is. Yeah. And I can see, you know, I, I, I'm glad you touched on even talking about the fact that it starts at an early age. And I saw somewhere that it could start, it usually starts in adolescence, right? So like age 12 and 13. And we have a lot of parents that listen to this show because we do a lot of topics on that as well. So parents, if you have children, young ones, and it's so hard right now, like I said, with the pandemic going on, I know also my kid has been hit hard, you know, with this whole pandemic and having to deal with all the changes and you know, grappling with everything that that means. But so we might not often recognize it, but it starts like around 12, 13. So your preteen or your young teens might be going through this. So what should they start to look for if you have a, a young teenager or so, boy or girl? Mm -hmm. What are some well, of the things that they should be looking out for? Yeah, I, I would say like the, the amount of stress that the young person is dealing with because um, uh, increase in stress causes for, you know, like a, you may want to, you may have a higher appetite and want to eat more. So stress eating um, or not eating at all. Um, uh, to, I, like this is excessive exercising. Um, Maybe it would be uh, obsessing over in the mirror of the image. Like, as I said, for a young teen, yes. it's, it's actually very hard because of social media. You know, we yeah. have this, this issue with filters and, you know, like 
photoshopping body parts and doing those things to make things look like they are a reality when they're not. And young people are very susceptible during that time, um, especially during adolescent years. And um, being influenced by those things are very important. So an another tip I would say to parents is being careful what your, your young person is consuming over social media. True. Yes. Social media is going to be the death of some of us, I'm telling you. They're going to see every role, every fact that I'm not filtering nothing. Or I'm telling you, Photoshopping what? No. Yeah. I'm but but just obsessing over social media, because they're they're, you know, we're talking about kids here. They're all obsessed over social media, right? So for the parents who are saying, oh my gosh, what do you mean? All all kids obsess over social media. Um, I would say the 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 content and also the social media influencers. Um, right. Right now we're we're in a, a day and age where like you know like Fashion Nova is like a yes. big one. Yes. And so the body type of Fashion Nova is not very realistic. Um, you it's know, it's not realistic at all. And I'm so yes. glad that you mentioned that because you know even like with Instagram, it's called Insta, right? It's instant in an instant. Somebody goes on and everybody, nobody takes pictures and puts them on social media unless they're perfect, right? Until it's perfect. And then they use all of these filters, filters right. and all this stuff to make their skin look perfect mm -hmm. and they're glowing and it's not real, mm -hmm. you know? And I feel so bad for our children today because they're buying into this stuff, thinking that the perfection is real. The other thing that gets me sick, I'm not even gonna lie, lately I haven't really even been on social media myself and I'm grown, okay? Because it discourages me when I go on there and, the, and I saw something today and it was kind of like satire or something, it was like sarcasm. And this guy had this post where he talks about capitalism and how people worship capitalism, but he did it in a very sarcastic manner. Every time you get on there, it's about, oh, you should buy this and I can make you rich and I can make you this and look how much money I have and I'm perfect and I got these cars and I've got this wealth and it's so fake. None of it is real, but our children are buying into it, right? And they want to look like that and they want to be like that. And it's not, it's not true. Absolutely. And um, we also have, uh, th this is funny because I was having this conversation with a young person who was in college right now. And she was telling me about what's called the BBL culture as well. Um, so BBL standing for Brazilian butt lift. Um, people oh. are getting like, you know, their bodies, plastic surgery. And um, apparently, yeah, you know, the celebrities who have had those things, influencers who does does those things and, you know, are getting like, they're the ones being picked to be influencers because of their appearance. So, um, I mean, it, it's definitely a hard time to live in. For you young know, what's people. funny, as you're talking about that, there's influencers, right? I'm like, what qualifies them to influence our lives? What qualifies them to influence our children, Right. Uh, why are they so qualified? It's that just brings pop into my head. There's a recent show I watch. Um, again, it's a uh, I think it was a Korean show, and there's this woman on there, and it's a reality show. Notice I said quote unquote a reality show. Gosh, I forget the name of it. Oh, it's on Netflix. But anyway, it's all of these beautiful and influencers and this and that people that come and they're on this island. And this particular one, she's an influencer. And she had all the name brand clothing and bags and, and everything. And she comes on and she's like, oh, and everybody's like envying her like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, look at her. Turns out right now, her Instagram account, I think is like, she deleted everything because it turns out all of the stuff she had was fake. And she's an influencer. She is so embarrassed right now. She got so much fallout for this because they're like, why is an influencer who's supposed to be making so much money and representing all the da, 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 da. Everything was fake label, fake everything. Nothing was real, but she was perpetrating the fact that it's real. And it's so sad. What makes them qualified to influence the rest of us? I'm, I mean, we, we, we create influences uh, by following them, making them popular. Um, 
that's that's basically how they become an influencer um that's how, that's what instagram is um it's the that's the way the, the social media is run um and that's that's what young people are following yeah it's just like oprah oprah was an influencer if, mm-hmm. oprah, if oh, she the first influencer i know mm-hmm. if oprah said drink all drink out of that cup Cause I drank out of that cup and whatever, everybody run and drink out of that cup and that person get rich. Okay, so they, and if Oprah is using it, then whoever will use it. Um, real quick, Carlene says, we say social media, but it's not just that. It is all around us. I think the adults play a huge role in how this affect our children. And that's from one of our, uh, Carlene Frawling. That's one I'm of our saying. listeners. Hi, Carlene. So that's, you know, and Carlene, I do agree that it's not just social media, right? It's also the adults. And like you said, it's um, how it affects our children. The adults play a huge role in, in how it affects our children. Adults do. Absolutely. What do you say about that, Soraya? Um, well, I... I would just, I would recommend everyone just be very mindful of what, as I said, what they're consuming, because um, we may not see it instantly, but these things are influencing us. They're all, they're influencing us, you know, continuously watching, being on certain things. Those things influence your thoughts. You know, they influence your thoughts, they influence your behaviors, they influence your beliefs about yourself, about the world. Um, So being, being very mindful about what we, what we are watching, what we are listening to, um, is very important. Yeah. And I know for me also to as parents, um, I know my kid hates it, but you know, sometimes I have to be a helicopter parent because the kids these days, they're not really telling us what they're doing. Okay. And they're so clever. I have to catch mine. Like what? Okay. Uh-uh. So it's like, you've got to be that helicopter parent to know sometimes what they're watching. They are clever. They know how to change stuff that they were checking out and they were looking at and all this stuff. We don't always know who's influencing them. That's true. There, there, uh, for parents, you know, there are, um, they're like apps and even your cell phone provider, just putting this out there, a tip that your cell phone, your cell phone provider will teach you how to censor different materials on your children's phone. There's ways to do it. There's ways to put codes on the phone just in case, um, there's, there's so many devices now because just for safety reasons, um, yes. we know that now our young people have more access to things. So being able to censor things is, is really important. Yes. Um, yes being a hel- helicopter parent. You have to and do what please you have to do. parents take it seriously. This is not a joke, you know, and I'm not saying that you guys are taking it as a joke, but it's just a little reminder. It's a little loving friendly reminder that yes our children are wonderful beautiful spirits but we do have to be careful because it's not always just the kids it's like i said his who's influencing them and who's trying to reach out to them as a helicopter parent i also bumped into someone trying to reach out to my kid and it's like whoa hold up okay we're not going to be having this so people are out there trying to get to your children so be very very careful of that as well but to take us back to the topic of body dysfor- or dysmorphia, right? Reese, yeah. I'm starting to be like you. <laughs> um, so what Soraya said, I just want to recap that a little bit. If, if you find that your children, male or female, are having some obsessive preoccupation, right, with their perceived flaws. And notice I said perceived flaws, right? Because it's not a flaw, it's just how they feel about it. Right, Soraya? Absolutely. Okay, so if they're obsessed with what they think, they could be beautiful as ever, but they somehow feel. And if they're obsessed with that, then that's a red flag that you want to pay attention to and they're spending hours thinking about what's wrong with them with their face or their body or something they're spending hours thinking about it that's an issue it's a red flag um so take a look at that be mindful of that if they have repeated attempts to camouflage some of these what they call flaws they're trying to camouflage it and they're doing everything to cover it up meaning like the filters and you know excessive makeup um uh, anything to like distract you right okay um 
if they're always comparing that this one is hard though comparing their themselves with other people right because a lot of people compare themselves i compare myself sometimes which is not good but we all do it but i guess if they're excessively comparing their themselves with others yeah, right? this, this is excessive this is like a constant like i'm always thinking about my image i'm always trying to look a certain way this, we all have insecurities, right? We, we may have insecurities. Um, young people, they struggle with, and people in general, sometimes we struggle with our self-esteem, um, but have being uh, too preoccupied with these things is where that um, like disorder comes in. Got you. If you're too preoccupied, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, if you're too preoccupied. So those are the things because we're all human beings and we're born flawed. We're not perfect. So we all have some of these insecurities, like you mentioned, but watch out for that in your, in your children, because that's where it starts. Um, and if their life in general just starts to suffer because of some of these things, and they are starting to have emotional distress because of it, right? That's when you want to really look out for them. So what are some of, um, have you treated Several, many of these cases or any of these cases in particular like specifically yeah. specifically not uh, it's not something that like that specifically coming up body dysmorphia but um with trauma there come that those things come up you yeah. know whether as i said it, it could be a stress response to um maybe binge eat a little more than than supposed to even to a point of discomfort Mm -hmm. um, or purging, you know, doing things to, to eat too much and then purging those, those things. Um, so that, that can ha that can come up with, with trauma, again, dealing with stress, that being a, a coping technique. Um, there's, there's so many things that come with it. Um, it, right now it's considered body dysmorphia. That, that's something that's new okay, in the DSM-5. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Well, I'm sorry. What were you going to say? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, um, but uh, eating disorders is also not that that's really where it comes from. Um, it's not something that we talk about as well. Those eating disorders is um, something that we need to look out for as well. Okay. Real quick. Um, uh, yes. I want to, to um, put out there that, well, I, what, why I was interested in this is because I, Tammy Roman, housewife of you know, basketball wives, she suffers from this and that is what's like oh my god that this is she's a celebrity you think that she has everything body every you know everything like that and um and i just want to play a, a ex something a excerpt from her interview that she did on the real and um hold on i'm just trying to set it up i wanted people to hear exactly like we see them out there and you know, it's just crazy. Hold on, let me get. Okay, so this is Tammy Roman. You're you're about to play, right? And if you know, for those folks who may not be familiar with her, like Reese said, um, she's from um, Housewives of Atlanta or so, or which one? No, oh, she's Basketball Wives. Basketball Wives. Okay, see, Reese knows the T. I, I know everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's her speciality. Okay, so. Definitely. That's where she, that's one of the things she's been in other um, movies and, you know, television ventures as well. So she's well known and you guys can definitely go look her up, but this is um, an excerpt. I think I like where it starts, like maybe even um, at the minute mark, Reese, because when she starts to talk about the fact that she yeah, definitely right. suffers from it and it was very surprising to know that such a high profile personality does suffer from this. Yeah. And um, again, the credit goes to the show, The Real. Okay, that's what we're, we're playing this from. Um, it's trying to be mean, not necessarily having to say what it is that they're saying. The problem is those comments don't hurt me. Right. Because of what this disorder is, mm -hmm. you guys are actually pushing me more towards my own demise. You're wow. pushing, when you say, Tammy, you look skinny, Tammy, you look this, Tammy, you look that, I 
turn that into, I must be on the right, I'm on the right track. I'm actually skinny. I'm actually this, I'm actually that. Don't do that. You don't have to say stuff. You don't have to leave comments on people's physical appearance. You do not. It's a choice you're making to do that you don't have to do. Mm -hmm. Are you getting help though today? Am I with my physician? No. Am I trying to manage it as best I can on my own and with my family? Yes. I have to be honest, and and maybe this is too much, but Hollywood doesn't help, right? Mm -hmm. The the world we live in, Mm -hmm. the industry. And which we talked about that. So, you know, I just felt like I wanted to share that to see exactly where she coming from, like, she has money, fame, everything. And right. Said, but what I was hoping that you also played Reese, like, like at the minute mark where she talks about how it started, because people can actually relate to what she said, how it started. But basically, I think she said it started. She went on because, um, you know, she's tall. She's slim. She's like five, nine or five, ten or something like that. She was like less than one hundred and fifteen pounds or one hundred twenty pounds or whatever. So she thought she was it. So she went for a modeling job. And that's when they told her, they were like, oh, she said, the woman turned her around and was like, you got back fat. You got this, you got that. Your breasts are saggy. And she was small. And that can mess with your psyche. Hold on. Let me play that. part. You said a minute mark, right? Yeah. There we go. Hold on. uh... How do you feel? Well, for me, it's it's very close to home. And it's something that I don't. Sorry. Talk about on? often. So this is like the first time because I feel comfortable enough yeah. to talk with you ladies about it. But I suffer from body Why is it doing that? Sorry. dysmorphia disorder. And I've been dealing with it since I was 13 years old. What? And so a lot of people don't know it's either hereditary or genetic or comes from a negative experience yeah. where your self image has been annihilated. And for me, when I was 13 years old, I wanted to be a model. You know, we're from New York. Mm -hmm. I was tall. I was 5'9". I was thin. And I went to this agency and walked in, and that lady ripped me to shreds. I thought I was perfect. 5'9", less than 120 pounds. (laughs) Assuredly, they're going to sign me. Mm -hmm. And she literally stood me in front of a mirror and said, you've got back folds. You've got fat over your knees. You know, you need to do something with your chin. Your breasts are sagging. And I went home that night, and from that moment, every time I looked at myself in the mirror, I could find something wrong with myself. And I didn't know what it was. I didn't know how to deal with it. I just knew, well, I've got to get skinnier. I've got to make myself smaller. I want to be a model. And so I started abusing laxatives. I started not eating. I started throwing up. I started doing everything that I could think of to do to be as skinny as I could possibly be, being obsessive about my weight loss. Wow. So, yeah. You know, I really wanted to play that portion. So for others who are at home, dealing with this, they can hear that someone else is experiencing exactly what they're experiencing. So can you talk about that a little, can you expound on that a little bit more, Soraya, so people know what what this is and the fact that this is a medical diagnosis, right? Can you just get up one day and say, oh, I have this? Well, yeah, no, it's a it's a medical diagnosis. And Um, I mean, if we were listening to the specific things that she talked about, she talked about like, you know, wanting to be wanting to be really thin, um, not eating, uh, binging, purging, throwing up. That's what purging is. Um, Taking laxatives. But it's also not um, just being obsessed with being skinny. Um, As I said, we're in the day and age where, you know, there's a lot of people who want to be bigger. Um, we've kind of like turned the, the hands of time, you know, and people are struggling with that. It's really just about body image, like what image and what other, it's really about the beliefs about what other people think. As you can see, like if, if you heard her story, you know, it's about really what other people think. And um, the solution to that, honestly, is to go to a professional 
and learn about um, acceptance. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah. here I am thinking I'm fat and I'm struggling and there she is skinny and she's going through, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's crazy. What? But what also hit me, Reese, is the fact that the, the part that you played about the comments, that she was getting negative comments. So on social media, everybody thought they were dissing her, right? When they were like, oh, you look so skinny. You look like death. You look like da, 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 da. And in her mind, because this is a mental illness, she's taking that as a compliment. Like, oh, they think they were hurting her, but they're not hurting her with the comments. Yes. They, she's taking it as a compliment. Like, wow, I really look like that. Then I'm on the right track. I'm doing good. I'm looking the way I should. I'm skinny. You know, so what she's saying is you're actually sending me to my demise because you're making me think that I'm going down the right path. So, you know, one of the things people should do, you know, one thing I saw somewhere is that what you should not say to somebody then as a result of that, if you have body dysmorphic disorder, right? One of the things we should do is um, educate ourselves first on what this is, right? Because we have to remember that it causes them to see themselves differently, people who are suffering from this. They see themselves differently. So we have to educate. If you're not experiencing this, you got to educate yourself on this a little bit more besides them getting counseling. But if you, if you're a mother of somebody or a friend or a relative, you know, we can't just go out there saying these horrible things to them because they're not perceiving it the way we think that they're perceiving it. So learn about it first, um, steer the conversation without dismissing them, Right. Are there other things that you would tell, um, Soraya, you would tell folks who are not suffering from this, who may have children or people going through this? How do they deal with this? How do I would, they deal with the loved one? I would honestly say just in general, right, because of the stigma behind this topic to just um, in general for people, you know, I think as a society, we need to stop talking about people's bodies. <laughs> you know the, that just in general you know like it's their body you know there's some of the, some things we don't know what's going on with someone whether it's a health issue um whether it's whether it is a mental health issue um taking that emphasis out of people's bodies um because we don't know who could be suffering with that sometimes people don't know that they're suffering with that as i said before you know there's a lot of bodybuilders who st suffer from this if there's models who suffer bodybuilders people who are in competitions getting awards every day suffer with body dysmorphia mm -hmm. um so with that being said just as a general you know um not putting anyone out there because there may be it may be possible that somebody may not even know that they struggle with this or we may not we may not know someone struggle with this in general because they may not so show signs mentally. Um, to I personally would think we need to take get away from pointing out people's bodies um, and just accepting, and that starts with accepting our own. So if you accept your own, um, you won't compare it with someone else, um, and you won't have anything to say about anyone else's body. Absolutely, I do like that. But one of the things that I, I want to bring back, it requires a medical diagnosis, everybody. So to make sure that you understand this and you're fully accepting of it, like she says, she has a therapist and get somebody professional to talk to and deal with this. Um, and um, how long does this really last for, Soraya? Is it like a short-term thing or... Is it something they'll just get over after talking to somebody for like a month or something? No, I think I think as far as the way therapy is set up is working through belief systems, like where the root of it comes from, um, and and breaking down those belief systems. So it, it may take a little bit, depending on how long it's been how it's been going on in general. Right, right. Um, from what I had heard also, my understanding is that there is no cure for this thing. It's not like it's something that you can cure because even with Tammy Roman, I think she, like she said, she started really, really young and she's 50 years old. I want to say, I think she's 50 oh, no. or 51 and she started at what? 13, she says. 
she, she started really young. So it's something that stays with you for a long time, but it, it requires continuous treatment, right? But like you said, Soraya, it all depends on breaking down the beliefs and working through it. So everybody might be a little bit different, but it's not like there's a magic cure that no. you can just say, now you're cured. You go to the doctor for, you know, some medical illness and they give you some pills and yeah, it's gone. You know, you have, you have a cold, you have the flu or something, and you get a shot and it goes away. No, it's right. not like that. Right. And, um, just like with the, um, a medical diagnosis, someone can be in remission, right? They can be in recovery from those things. So being very aware mm -hmm. of what they've struggled with in the past and, and staying away from anything that is, uh, that can kind of offset that, the, the illness again. So, um, like, you know, if someone, for example, putting out there a medical diagnosis, if someone struggles with high blood pressure or diabetes, you know, they have to stay away from a uh, certain kind of uh, sodium content, you know, and, and the same with like sugars, you know, and things like that. So it's the same thing for someone with a disorder. It would, they would recover from those things by kind of creating a life for themselves um, that would promote health, basically, you know, staying away from someone who would point out certain things or, you know, trying really hard to uh, practice affirmations. That, that, that goes back with those, uh, those beliefs. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I also want to point out that some of these, you know, we talked about, or Sarai, you mentioned before, and thank you so much today because you're helping to really teach our audience what this is, because that's what I like to do here. I like to teach people and let them know specifically, you know, because you're at home right now, you may not be seeing a professional, but I want you to know what to look for. Write it down. I hope you have your pens and your notebooks out. So if you get one thing from today, then I'm happy. At least start there. Okay. So I like to give detailed information. So thank you for helping me with that, Soraya. Sure. Um, one of the things I had seen um, is some of the things to look for. It's not just when we talk about your body and you're obsessed with your body, that's a very, that's a more general description, but for everybody who's listening, if you're not sure, this includes your skin and your vein appearance, you know, like the veins in your skin, you could be obsessed with that. You know how some, some people, they have varicose veins or whatever, and they're so worried about it. And it could be that that causes it. Like you mentioned, um, Soraya, <laughs> muscle size and tone for some of those bodybuilders. I never knew that. You mentioned that. I was like, wait a minute. So muscle size and tone. So when they're working out, if they're looking at the person next to them and their muscles are not as big as the person next door, it's like, wait a minute. And, and it could be, I was listening to a podcast the other day. It was this girl's breast, her boobs. Yes. They were too small, I guess. I was going to mention that to your breast size. Breast size, butt size. That's why there's so many. The size of your butt, size of your genitalia. Crazy. I didn't know that. It's like, how are you obsessed about that? How do you know what somebody else's genitalia looks like? Why are you obsessing about it? But it's not for me to judge. Okay. Um, your hair. Um, your thinning them. and baldness. Yes. You know, the hair, most of us <clears throat> might be worried about the hair. <laughs> okay, so I can understand that, but not to the extent where... <laughs> Listen, my, my, my thing is my tummy. Okay, that is my thing. And trust me, I'm not even half there with it, with what that word, dysmorphia. Yeah, but we have to be careful not to let it get to that extent where, you know, it could be the nose. Oh, and we did a, we did a, um, an episode on colorism. So it could be your complexion, yes. right? Because so many people, oh my goodness gracious. I know for me personally, as a dark skinned woman, I've been through it. And we talked about that on our episode on colorism, everybody. So mm. <clears throat> If you all folks who are checking us out today, if you haven't checked out our episode on colorism, go to, uh, where are they going to go check out that episode, Reese? Let's connect on YouTube. We have a YouTube channel, so you can see all the discussions that we have had. Yes, 
all of our shows, all of our episodes are on our Let's Connect YouTube channel. And what we're talking about now, we did an episode on colorism. So it ties back into this. You know, uh, we talked about the fact, you know, as dark skinned women, some of us, we had so many issues. I know I had some issues growing up, you know, so you have to really be strong to combat. Mm -hmm you know, some of, of those issues that we faced even growing up. So it could be your complexion, it could be wrinkles, it could be acne and any other types of blemishes on the skin, right? Okay, so is 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 it considered like a serious mental illness, Soraya? Um, You're the I mean, mental health expert. Well, um, I, really anything that, that usually gets a diagnosis is if it uh, has, impacted your life you know if you're like I so you asked me this earlier um have I ever had experience with this I've had one client I used to work in a, at a high school and she did she was not she did not want to come to school um she was very obsessed with her face she felt like her face was uh de deformed and actually she showed me pictures of what she looked like before and what she looks like now and it was exactly the same but in her mind mm -hmm. she looks different you know, um, and so, yeah, it, it, if it, it uh, affects your life, it's to the point where she did not want to leave the whole, she did not want to leave her house. So how do you convince a person that thinks that her face is disformed and you, how do you get them to get out of that mindset? Like, no, it's not. Um, <clears throat> this may sound very extreme but if someone needs inpatient treatment meaning they need to be with a therapist um with professionals uh for a 24-hour period for a long period of time to work on those things maybe they need some medication to help with the anxiety of it to be able to calm down and, and kind of work through some things and where the root came from then that's what needs to happen treatment is available there's specific treatments for um body disorders so there's treatment centers for things like that there's inpatient uh, meaning you go to a treatment center and you stay there overnight for a few days depending on how long the doctor says that you need to or there's outpatient which is like therapy where you go to someone and if you could need to do it twice a week and work through those things through the the trauma of whatever where the root came of that came from then that's what needs to happen mm. So basically, as the expert, the mental health expert, you have techniques, specific techniques yes. that you use based on the individual yes. to get to the root yes. of their problem so you can hopefully help them to root it out. And it's not mm -hmm. an overnight process. No. What I'm hearing, you know, no, it's going to take not. time. It definitely takes time because beliefs are hard. Um, beliefs are hard to uh, break down, if, especially if it's been there for years. It's hard to get someone to believe what they be uh, not believe what they believe. <laughs> right. It's true. If they believe it and it's ingrained in them for all those years since they were adolescent to now adults, that would be a tough job for any specialist, you know, or any health expert like yourself, mental health expert yourself or anyone else. It's going to take some time, but um, you're very knowledgeable. So I would imagine that that's when you have to pull up every expertise you have <laughs> to come up with a plan no, for absolutely. that individual. Yeah, oh um, as I said, I'm a trauma therapist. So yeah, I, I work, I do a specific modality called EMDR and it, that's exactly what it pinpoints is trauma and the beliefs that we have surrounding the traumas or the things that we've experienced. So what if this is left untreated, Soraya. You know, this body dysmorphic disorder, what if it's left untreated and untreated, you know, because unfortunately, because your specialty is in the black and brown communities and with women of color, et cetera. So you, we all know a lot of times in our communities, we do not seek the help we need as black women or black people in general. You know, and there's so much stigma surrounding mental health. We're so ashamed. Mm -hmm. We don't want anybody to know we crazy as a fan, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I, I shouldn't joke about it, but that's a joke. Um, but we need help, right? But we don't want to take medication. We, there's so much stigma surrounding it. And we don't want to go seek help because we think people are going to think we're crazy. 
right? So mm-hmm. what if this thing is left untreated and everybody's running around with this issue? What happens potentially? So I'm going to say in the most like human term, I mean, honestly, living a life um, unsatisfied, that's that's basically it. <laughs> um, that's uh, honestly like, because it, it's about self-image. So um, there's so many things that people may do to cope with those things. There's a lot of un, maybe unhealthy behaviors that may come with that. Maybe it's uh, using substances to, to avoid, but, you know, w- with these things comes, uh, coping techniques. How, how are you, how are you dealing with your stuff? So it, there could be a lot of, depending on what, what's going on, there could be a lot of different, um, ways that they're coping where that may, ha- may be very harmful to their life. I did read somewhere and, um, I'm hoping that you could expound on this a little bit for us, because this is in your wheelhouse. Personally, you, um, experience this. I did read somewhere that it could, like you said, lead to such destructive behavior and, um, like even suicidal attempts, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Increased yep. anxiety and depression and eating disorders. But the big one that stood out for me when I saw that was suicidal attempts, so, you know, can you expound on that a little bit? How would you treat something like that? How did you get over your trauma like that? Your, you know, since you, you were willing to talk about it. Yeah, sure. Um, so I, I'm big on the word healing. Healing is I-N-G, right? It's a continuous journey. Um, so that's, that's for me. I am healing, I-N-G. Um, and uh, s- someone who's maybe even with this disorder, struggling with suicidal um, attempts or thoughts, um, that's, that's where we get really dangerous. And again, that's where, you know, the in, outpatient is out of the question, inpatient treatment is where we need to go. And whether that is uh, implementing medication as well, um, but I would 100% recommend inpatient. When there's uh, suicidal ideations, um, I, would, I, d- I would definitely recommend that. You know, every time I think about that, I still remember this young lady that was on that show from Extra that recently um, committed suicide. I watched her every day on Extra and beautiful, gorgeous woman. Karen, Taryn, was her name? Reese, you remember her name? I forget her name. I don't remember as well, but I know, I know who you're you know talking about. You know who I'm talking about, about mm-hmm. right? And And just to talk about like suicide because that's something I think that the black community doesn't talk about yes Um, this is just like the general the general statement I made before you never know what someone is going through as you said you know she was beautiful I think um the last interview she had was with uh Denzel Washington um and you know happy and smiling and honestly we don't know what someone is going through so we, as in, uh, me as an individual, um, we need to be very mindful of how we talk to people, how we treat people. We don't know, um, especially in the black community, because we have, as you said, I mean, you said this earlier, and we have to be, we have to be really strong, right? And that's the thing that we have in our mind. We have to be strong. So we're really good at keeping a strong face, um, and we don't know what someone is going through, and so being very mindful of the things that we say to other people um, and considerate of someone else's life. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Yes, so true, so true. Um, And that's why I wanted to touch on that because I want people to know this is something that is very serious. And in the black and brown communities, um, of course we, we touch on every community here on this show. Um, But I wanted to highlight that because particularly in the black and brown communities, we don't always seek the help that we need. And, you know, I'm a part of the black and brown community. So I can say that because I know this. Okay. And I'm speaking from a place of knowledge. We always think, oh, we'll get past it. Oh, it's fine. Ah, you know, and we pass it off until it gets too late. 
Mm -hmm. So if you are, and we're going to wrap up this segment in a little bit, but I want you to just speak directly to our audience right now. If this is something that you are experiencing, please, we say this all the time on this show, reach out for help. Okay. There's no shame in it. Get the help that you need. Talk to somebody and we can help that beautiful woman. The other day that I watch every day, she's always smiling and she's happy and this and that. Nobody knew that she was battling this. And then she committed suicide. And I'm like, why would she do this? She's so gorgeous. Oh my gosh. I would love to have her life not knowing that she didn't feel that way about it. And it's like, I can't even fathom why she wouldn't, but it's not for us to, you know, to think that way. It's the person that needs to reach out and seek help and know that they have the support. They can get the support that they need to get beyond this. And my dear Soraya, beautiful Soraya, Thank you so much for joining us, sharing your experiences with us, your knowledge and your expertise. So before you go, is there anything you want to say about this topic to everybody listening? Um, so as I said, I'm uh, my specialization is in trauma. So just putting that out there. Um, trauma comes from uh, other people's beliefs other people's beliefs when we are really young, right? Our parents, they have a lot of say on how we feel about ourselves. Yeah. Um, and so, so just thinking about someone who struggles with this disorder, I mean, again, I'm gonna talk specifically on the, the black and brown community, you know, someone pointing out, oh my gosh, you got this type of shape and oh, wow, you have this and, and pointing out different things from a small young age. And these, yeah. these is, these seeds are where the beliefs come from. Um, and, or maybe someone pointing out, oh my gosh, you got too much, like, as you said, as the, the um, interview said, you know, like you got back fat, you know, you got this and point, pointing out different things. This starts at a, a very young age. And that's what, where most of um, mental health starts from. It's from a very young age. Um, and that's why I said, I was talking about childhood trauma, um, being very mindful of those things. I, I believe that we don't have to get to a place where things are unmanageable to seek help, to seek someone to talk to. Um, there, I think we, we need to be proactive just as we go to the, the medical doctor to get a checkup. Um, we should be going to a mental health doctor to get the checkup as well. Um, because there may be so many things that, you know, you don't know until you start talking about it, realizing, wow, this stuff really does affect me. I never processed this. Um, it's, it's very important. And I would also go as further as to say, find someone who you, who you think you would feel comfortable with. If you're going to go see a therapist, interview them every, usually the therapist, they will do, they will give consultations, free consultation, ask questions. What modality are you using? How long have they been in practice? Do they work with what you you're going through? Um, if they, if not, even with me, I know we, we kind of shout out my, my, my company. If I'm not able to serve someone, I, my job is also to refer you to someone who can, mm. okay. I have to ethically, I have to, um, so interview your therapist, find out if they have experience with the things that you may be struggling with. Um, and it could be something, it, it doesn't have to be something extreme. It could be, uh, stress. It could be, I, I, don't, I can't manage my stress. I'm having racing thoughts. I'm not able to sleep because I'm thinking about different things. And there's different things that can, um, can trigger these things as well. It could be your finances that's causing you to stress and you can't sleep. Um, that's very common, in, especially in the black and brown community. I was just going to um, say that that's a normal thing. And that's something to, that's a reason yeah. to go speak to someone about that, how to deal with those, that, how to cope especially if you're coping, depending on how you're coping, asking yourself, how am I dealing with this? We want to talk about body dysmorphia. Am I, am I binging? Am I emotionally eating? Is that how I'm dealing with my stress? Um, yes. Am I not eating? Did I forget to eat today? Yeah. Yeah. You know, these, these are questions that we need to ask ourselves. And it, like I said, it doesn't have to be this extreme thing for you to go to, um, um, a therapist. Uh, it can be something in our minds. We think that it's oh, this is simple. Uh, I'm struggling thinking about my bills. Um, that can cause a lot of that can. That's a, a start to a lot of different things. 
different so behaviors. So, Soraya, what do you yes, tell a person who is an emotional eater? I would. Go on I would. One. I would say talk to a professional about kind of breaking that down for you. What does that look like for you? You know, there's a lot of factors. Um, right. Um, and I, I believe in holistic health. So uh, there's there's your mind, body, and spirit. Um, so your, your mind, your beliefs, your body. So maybe it is doing some movement, adding that into it. And also, uh, spending time with your, your higher powers, you know, God, um, these are all important. Uh, your, your spiritual health is also have, having to do with your values and what, what, what's important to you. Um, these are all connected. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much. And like you said, there's no magic pill that you can just say now oh okay I'm gonna cure your eating disorder or you know whatever you're obsessing about like overnight or whatever you've got to get in touch and you as the therapist the professional gonna sit with that person get a real understanding of where is it coming from what led to that and you've got to really seriously with them break that down and that could be that could require require like you said some impatient help and assistance so you you need to seek the help and you guys you'll put in the work with your health professional like Soraya and that's really where it starts and you can't be ashamed to put in the work okay but start start right where can our listeners find you and all of that good stuff uh I am on Facebook healing wounds coaching and consulting LLC so uh, can, can you tell me that again? Because we're going to put the link yes, down later. Um, Healing Wounds Coaching and Consulting LLC. That's on Facebook, my Facebook page. Healing uh, Wounds, Wounds with an S? Yes. Healing Wounds Coaching and you write out the letter and you write out the word and or is just the the and sign. Yeah. The and sign of Healing wound, co- Wounds Coaching and Consulting consulting that's on facebook llc yes uh, it's on facebook and on instagram it's at healing wounds cc healing wounds cc yes ma'am okay so everybody i know you have your pen and paper and that's the reason I'm, i'm having soraya go really slowly so you can write it down capture it and but don't worry if you don't get it We will put it the links on our Facebook um, page on our YouTube page where you're going to go and rewatch this episode at your leisure, you know, because you might want to go back and really think about it some more and listen to everything that she has to say in detail. But for now, if you're taking notes real quickly on Facebook, it's Healing Wounds Coaching and Consulting LLC. If you're an Instagram person at Healing Wounds CC. Okay. Is there a number they could reach you, Soraya? Uh, email. Um, email. And the email would be my first name, S-O-R-A-Y-A, at healingwoundcc.com. Okay. I'm going to repeat that for the folks who didn't get it. If you want to email Soraya instead, the email is Soraya, S-O-R-A-Y-A, at healingwoundscc.com. Yes. Okay. So we're going to put the links up for you, everybody, if you didn't get it, not to worry. But Soraya, thank you so much no for problem. coming, talking with us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. We enjoyed it. And I learned a lot today. And I know our audience did too. You know this? Yes, Reese. Soraya mm-hmm. has a calm spirit. Oh, um, well, she needs that for the profession she's in, because especially if somebody like you walk through her door, she's going to have to stay calm for you. Oh, I would enjoy me as a, a client. OK, you no, know, she's going to need a calm spirit when you walk through the door. She's going to be back there going, oh, Lord. Lord. <laughs> oh, let me see what I'm going to pull out of my bag of tricks for this one. Oh. <laughs> You're going to have to dig deep in that bag, Soraya. <laughs> Because the first hundred things might not work on this one. So this funny. is a tough nut to crack. <laughs> I'm not that bad. Okay. 
<laughs> I mean, it's evidenced by the pink Fisher Price headphones on the head. Come on now, you know what you're dealing with, Soraya. Right? Are we still on that? Oh my goodness. <laughs> she hating. She hating Soraya. That's I wear it well. <laughs> and she wears it like a crown, like a queen that she is. Yes. That's right. <laughs> I'm just messing with her. <laughs> but Soraya, thank you so much, my dear, for coming. Thank you. And if you could just write a little note, I guess, on your your social media and stuff yes. to tell them that you enjoyed these crazy ladies that you hung out with. Yes. So people know that we're, we're not, well, Carly, I'm not really crazy, but she is. Whatever. I take it for the team every week. Carly says she learned a lot. Yes, Carlene, thank you so much. And thank you for your comments. And Carlene, by the way, was supporting you, Soraya. She oh, loved thank the comments. You. And she was supporting all the comments that you made um, and that your comments summed it up, summed up everything that you were talking about. So absolutely. And that's what we're here for. When our audience says they learn stuff, we're happy. Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. And we're definitely, definitely going to have you back again. I, I will I will be there. Definitely- yes. It was such a pleasure, my dear. Yes. We'll chat soon. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Right. You too. Bye. Bye. Yes, that was uh that was good. Yes, absolutely. I learned a ton and I'm so glad that she came to chat with us today. And I just wanted to, before we go real quickly to remind everybody, this is a big issue. So in case everybody's wondering, why did they do this topic? It's a big issue. We also had a previous guest, a teenager on the show, Tyler, who was on the show, who talked about this. So this, it starts from early. And what we're trying to do is nip it in the bud. Hopefully before, as Soraya said, before you sit with it until you're 50 years old, like Tammy Roman, and now trying to deal with this, with that it's already so deeply rooted in you that you can't even get it out, you know, or you may not even make it to 50 because of the suicidal ideations that you might've had while not treating it. So we wanted to touch on this and thank you, Reese, for actually wanting to do this more in depth. We talked about it before, um, on on the show and we had Tyler come on and talk about it from his teenage high school perspective that he talked about so many high school classmates of his that are actually dealing with this so it's a big deal parents we want you to pay attention as well and more than 200,000 cases of this exist in the U.S. per year so it's a big issue we don't always know that the person next to us is grappling with this but it's a big deal. So you want to pay attention to your families, to your kids, you know, your loved ones and see some of the signs we talked about more than 200,000 cases per year. Okay. It's a big deal. And 2.5% in males, 2.2% of females. So it's even a larger population in the males than the females. I didn't even think that the males would go through that. I'm yes. Not that it's just females. Could yes, you- Soraya's specialty with is with the females, but this affects males and females. So it's not just a female issue, everybody. We want you to pay attention and pay attention to your sons, your nephews, your brothers as well, because they're going through it as well. And you know, men don't talk about stuff. They don't want to talk about anything. Uh-huh. So you may not know that they're dealing with this, but they are. All right. And about one. So to break it down even more realistic um, for us, one in 50 people are dealing with this. You know, we got millions of people here. Yeah. One in every 50 is dealing with this. This is a big issue. It is. All it right. Is. So we thank you, everybody, for rocking with us, joining with us um, today. As usual, you know, you know, we're going to be here every week. So come on back. And if you didn't get a chance to watch the whole show, we have a lot of friends who join us and then they have to hop off or something. Check us out on our YouTube page. The full episode will be up there. Go look at it. And what we always ask for your support in doing, what do we ask our friends to do, Reese? To subscribe to our channel. Okay, that's a form of support. And tell your friends about us. 
Yes. yes. And the way you tell your friends is share the link. You know how every time we see something funny, we send, we take the link and we send it to each other like, girl, check this out. You want to check out this video. Look at this. Right. Do the same thing is what we're asking. Send the link to our show, to your friends, your family, this and that, so that they can check it out and they can subscribe to us as well. But don't forget to subscribe. That's how you support us. And that's how you share to support us as well. Okay. And with this, we're going to wrap up today's show. And thank you guys for tuning in. And actually, I'm back on the air on Sundays. I started yesterday. So I do have my Mimosa Mix next week, Sunday, from 3 to 6, where I play my old school music and all of that. It was so much fun yesterday. So you are like a typical Jamaican with the six jobs, man. <laughs> Love the radio. I love it. I love music and I just love I don't know anybody who have more jobs than you. I don't know anybody who have more jobs than you, Reese. It's like you're like the energizer bunny. You don't stop. I have to keep occupied because if I am too bored, I get in trouble. So oh I my goodness I gracious. Have to. So check me out on Sundays, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. It's called the mimosa mix. And you always have to have a drink in that glass. Okay. So even if it's water, even if it's water, no pressure around here. All right. Yes. So, so thank you once again. Yes. As usual, this is the show called let's connect. We thank you so much, everybody for hanging out with us, spending your time with us when you could be doing so many other things. We appreciate you. We love you. Come on back next week. Same time, same place every Monday evening, 6 p.m to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on MyTurnRadio.com or on our Facebook Live where you can see us and watch the videos that we like to play. Okay? And we are Let's Connect, the show where you find more compassion, more empathy, and less, less judgment. judgment. Thank you, everybody. See you next week. Bye-bye.